Well, it finally happened. After 49 years, the US Supreme Court has officially overturned Roe versus Wade, and in so doing, they eliminated the so-called constitutional right to an abortion. Specifically, a month and a half after the unprecedented leak of a draft opinion to Politico, the US Supreme Court issued their official ruling, I have it right here in my hands, and in this majority opinion, which was written by Justice Samuel Alito, the Supreme Court formally overturned both Roe versus Wade, which initially recognized a so-called right to abortion, as well as another case called called Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Here's specifically what part of this opinion said in the beginning, quote, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. The constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the one on which the defenders of Roe and Casey now chiefly rely, the due process clause of the 14th amendment. That provision has been held to guarantee some rights that are not mentioned in the constitution, but any such right must be quote unquote deeply rooted in this nation's history and tradition, and implicit in the concept of ordered liberty. It is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. And that last part about returning the abortion issue to the people's elected representatives, that is essentially the heart of the matter. Because in a certain sense, this case is not about whether abortion is moral or not. But rather, it was always about whether the U.S. Constitution contains an implicit right for a person to get an abortion, which the justices determined is not the case. And therefore, if the people in this country want abortion to be codified into law, they have to go through the normal legislative process and get it passed through Congress, which at this moment looks rather unlikely, given the fact that the last two times this was brought forward by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, it failed. And therefore, what will happen starting today is that the abortion issue will be returned to the states, meaning that the decision of whether or not to outlaw abortions is now in the hands of the individual states. And we're already seeing the effects of this change playing out. Because to start with, 13 different states have what are known as abortion trigger bans. These are bans on abortion which are triggered by the U.S. Supreme Court decision. Meaning that the states of Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Kentucky will have abortions banned within their states effective immediately. Then you also have the states of Alabama, Georgia, Iowa, Ohio, and South Carolina, which currently ban abortions after six or eight weeks of pregnancy. These bans, which were previously legally questionable, are now in full effect. Then you also have the states of Wisconsin, West Virginia, Arizona, and Michigan that had bans on abortion prior to 1973 when Roe versus Wade first went into effect. And these bans, given the fact that they are still laws in the books, might once again go back into effect. Although whether they will be enforced is another matter. And then lastly, according to the Guttmacher Institute, which is a pro-choice organization that was actually previously a part of Planned Parenthood, they predict that based on the current political winds, the states of Florida, Montana, Indiana, and Nebraska might very soon outlaw abortions as well. And so there you have it. This is the current map of the U.S. showing how, as of today, 26 states have either already banned abortions or will likely ban them in the very near future. Whereas for the other 24 states, things will remain pretty much unchanged. Now, besides this change in how the legality of abortions is determined, well, there will be a lot more fallout from this decision. For instance, something I haven't mentioned yet is that the U.S. Supreme Court made this decision by a vote of six to three, with Justices John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett voting in favor of scrapping Roe versus Wade, whereas the court's three liberal justices, Alina Kagan, Sonia Sotomayor, and Stephen Breyer voted against it. And even though the majority opinion was written by Sam Alito, it's worth mentioning that Clarence Thomas wrote a concurring opinion in which he actually urged the court to use this momentum to examine some of the other prior cases that likewise might contain possible errors. These are related to things like gay marriage as well as the contraception. Here's specifically what Clarence Thomas wrote in his concurring opinion. Quote, in future cases, we should reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, which pertains to contraception, Lawrence, which pertains to same-sex marriage, and Obergefell, which also pertains to same-sex marriage. Because any substantive due process decision is demonstrably erroneous, we have a duty to correct the error established in those precedents. And so it might be the case that the overturning of Roe versus Wade might actually be the beginning of a wave of re-examinations of prior precedents. However, as you've likely noticed if you've turned on your television or went on the internet today, this has really riled a lot of people up who are pro-abortion. For instance, for all of today, outside of the U.S. Supreme Court, there was a giant mass of people protesting both 
for and against this ruling. You can see the footage up on screen for yourself. We actually had our people there out all day filming, and there were, quite literally, thousands upon thousands of people. And you actually had members of Congress who occasionally came out to give speeches to the crowd, such as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who told the people to take to the streets. Take a listen. Now, what she actually said echoes some of the flyers that we've been seeing around Washington, D.C. for the past several days now. You can see one of the flyers up on screen for yourself. They come from a militant group called Jane's Revenge. And they are clearly calling for people to take to the streets in what they're referring to as a night of rage. And at the bottom of the flyer, it pretty unequivocally says this, quote, to our oppressors, if abortions aren't safe, you're not either. And frankly, these types of threats, well, they should be taken seriously because over the past month or so, there have been protests outside of the homes of the conservative Supreme Court justices. Just as Brett Kavanaugh actually had an attempt on his life made by a crazed man who showed up to his home with firearms. And there have also been vandalizations and even firebombings of pro-life organizations as well as churches across the entire country. And unfortunately, it looks like this trend might actually continue into the future. Here is, for example, what a message from J Jane's Revenge, which was leaked to the public by journalist Jack Posobiec, here's what it told the people who follow them to do. You have seen that we are real. We are not merely pushing empty words. We are not one group, but many. We were unsurprised to see 30 days come and 30 days pass with no sign of conciliance. From here forward, any anti-choice group who closes their doors and stops operating will no longer be a target. But until you do, it's open season, and we know where your operations are. The infrastructure of the enslavers will not survive. You are already one of us. Everyone with the urge to paint, to burn, to cut, to jam. Now is the time. Go forth and manifest the things you wish to see. Stay safe and practice your cursive, Jane's revenge. And so, just like the year 2020, it looks like we are headed into another summer of fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. If you'd like to read more about anything that we went through in today's episode, including the full PDF of the Supreme Court decision, I'll throw all that down into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that you take a quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm so this video can be shared out to ever more people. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel. That way you can get this type of news content delivered directly into your YouTube feed every single weekday. Until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, stay safe, and most importantly, stay free. <laughs>